Welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created this series to help you understand the basics of property law. This series covers four fundamental questions about property and property law. And today we are talking about the third of those four questions, and that is using property. And again, probably constraints on property. Covenants on real property restrict the use of land. As other videos in this series suggest, covenants are very traditional areas of law. We, they come from English common law, uh, and they are subject to the statute of frauds, which means that they generally have to be in writing. Because they often burden multiple property owners or co-owners co or successive owners, the process of modifying or eliminating them may, may be more uh, difficult than modifying or terminating, let's say, an easement, which is typically with just a couple of parties and has much more lax rules around them, have much more lax rules around them. So here are a few ways that covenants can be modified or terminated. A covenant can create pathways to alteration or termination by its own terms. For example, a covenant could say that it lasts for a certain number of years. It could say that if some percentage of lot owners record an instrument saying it is terminated or ex extended, then the covenant will be terminated or extended. The covenant could also say that covenant schemes will continue automatically until some percentage of lot owners wants to terminate. So again, multiple ways that the covenants by its terms can actually be modified or terminated. Statutes also can limit the length of covenants. This happens in Massachusetts and probably other states that I'm not aware of. There is another important doctrine used to modify or extend a covenant or to terminate it. And that is the doctrine of changed conditions. What this doctrine says is that uh, if conditions, usually physical conditions, of the property or around the property have changed so much that there is no point to enforcing the covenant, then the covenant can be deemed terminated. This traditional doctrine is fairly, the traditional version of the doctrine, I should say, and traditional interpretation of it by courts is pretty protective of the covenant scheme. So even if conditions change significantly, it used to be that courts would still enforce uh, the covenants. But these days, courts are much more likely to accept or consider changed conditions. So here's an example of changed conditions. So consider a subdivision. Uh, the subdivision has, as a covenant, a, a residential-only restriction. So in other words, on the whole subdivision, it says uh, the use must be residential only. Over the years, however, one of the streets on the edge of the subdivision has slowly turned over for business use. For decades, this street in the subdivision has ended up serving the commercial functions of the neighborhood, even though the covenants on those commercial spaces say they should be residential only. Across the street, let's say in the area not subject to residential only covenants and outside of the subdivision, there are also businesses that have emerged. These kinds of facts are a classic example of change conditions that will, would compel a court to say that uh, the covenant no longer needs to be enforced, at least with respect to the edge street. There's also another way for uh, terminating uh, or modifying covenants. So if the subdivision in the example that we just gave did not try to enforce the terms of the covenant, then other, uh, and other lot owners in that subdivision may have an argument that that covenant has been abandoned. In other words, a court would say that the other owners in the subdivision sat on their rights so they can no longer enforce against businesses or future business, businesses that exist now or future businesses. For an excellent example of this, I would like for you to, to Google or to look up the Midtown Veterinary Hospital in Houston. It is owned by my uncle who in 2020, actually 2019, 
uh, and 2020 was the subject of the city of Houston's harebrained scheme to enforce residential only covenants against his petition to use property for a vet clinic. That property was on the edge of a subdivision. It had been used by the prior owner as a business for 20 years. You have in that case changed conditions, abandonment, and by the way, estoppel and that he relied on the apparent complete lack of enforcement and business uses that were plainly visible to the naked eye in purchasing the property to his detriment. So I will add that that particular covenant also included a whites only ownership policy, one that as a Mexican American like myself, my uncle would not have satisfied. But let's consider that kind of covenant in the video on Shelley versus Kramer. That case deals with another judicial mechanism for terminating covenants on the basis of state action essentially state involvement in the enforcement of a covenant. With that preview, and until then, I will leave it right there. I'd love to hear from you and connect with you on Twitter or through my website, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.